Null safety is often a concept that a lot of beginner programmers struggle with. But nonetheless, it's a core component of the Dart programming language. And if you want to create scalable, robust, less error-prone applications, then it is pertinent that you understand this concept to its fullest. In today's video, we're going to be learning all about what null safety is in the context of the Dart programming language. We're also going to be taking a look at some practical code examples to help you better solidify your understanding of this concept. And then finally, I'm also going to be sharing with you guys some best practices when it comes to working with null safety so that you guys can implement these within your own programming projects and benefit from having sound null safety within your projects. So the first thing that I'd like to talk about before we dive into any code is what null safety is, why we use it, and what are the advantages of it. So to do that, I'm actually going to be referring to the documentation that's available for sound null safety on Dart.dev. And as you can see, it says that the Dart language enforces sound null safety. And null safety is basically a mechanism you could think of, of the Dart program language that allows us to prevent a lot of errors that might unintentionally occur within our application because of certain variables having null as their value. And the last thing that I'd like to mention from this documentation is that with sound null safety, all variables require a value. And by default, Dart considers all variables non-nullable. And I'll come to what non-nullable variables are versus nullable variables, but just kind of take this thought and put that into your brain for now and keep that at the forefront of our discussion and just don't forget it. So with that said, Again, I'd like to emphasize that the Dart language enforces sound null safety. So when we write our code, we have to conform to the actual ideas of null safety. So to begin with the actual coding process, now the first thing that we're going to be doing is talking about what non-nullable variables are and then comparing them with nullable variables. And then from there, we'll talk about more null safety related concepts. So what is a non-nullable variable? Well, whenever we define a variable within Dart, for example, I'm defining an integer a and setting it equal to five. This is an example of a non-nullable variable. And the reason I say that is because I've defined a variable a and its data type is integer. So this basically tells the compiler that, hey, a is always going to have a value and a can never be null. Now, if I go ahead and try to set a to null intentionally, you can see that it's going to give me an error saying that a value of type null can't be assigned to a variable of type int. So I can update the value of a to any other integer value that I'd like, for example, 10, and that should work, but we can't set it to null because we have explicitly told the compiler that, hey, a is always going to have an integer value within itself. So that's pretty much what a non-nullable variable is. But when we are programming, Sometimes variables have to be null. Either we have to fetch some data from an API and we might never get that data, so that variable is going to be null, or sometimes we might get data and that variable will not be null. So in that case, that variable is called a nullable variable. So let's do this. For now, let's actually print a to the console and run our program. And let me add a semicolon, rookie mistake. And as you can see, after some time, it's going to print five to the console. And for those of you wondering, I'm using the dartpad.dev website, which is an online IDE for Dart development that you can use to run your code within your actual browser. So now what we're going to be doing is talking about how we can define a nullable variable. So nullable variables are defined in a slightly different manner than the actual non-nullable variable that I've shown you. And what we do is that we define the actual data type for the variable, but after that we use a question mark. And this basically indicates to the compiler that, hey, this variable, might have an integer or it might be null. And then we can give the variable whatever name we want or identifier. So in this case, I'll do B. And then if I go ahead and do this, this is pretty much going to be code that is legal code and that's not going to cause any issues. So now if I go ahead and print B, you're going to see that to the console, we should expect null to be printed out. And the reason for that is because even if we've defined the variable b, we haven't set it to any value. So by default, it's going to be null. If now I go ahead and set the value of b equals to five and then do run again, and let's do 10 just for some difference, you're going to see that 10 gets printed to the console. So the way you assign values to a nullable versus a non-nullable variable is the same. The only difference is, is that a non-nullable variable is always going to have some kind of a value, while a nullable variable 
might have a value and might not have a value. So those are the basic concepts or the basic building blocks when it comes to working with null safety within Dart. So now that we have a good understanding of nullable versus non-nullable variables, the next thing that we're going to be talking about is the late keyword and why we use it. Usually the late keyword comes into play when we are talking about non-nullable variables. And by this, I mean the variable at the top here, which I've defined as A, and I'm saying that the data type for A is going to be an integer. So this basically tells the compiler that, hey, int A, A is always going to have a value. It can never be null. But now if I go ahead and I remove this assignment for A, and then I try to print A, and let's go ahead and try to run our application, you're going to see that it's going to give me an error saying that non-nullable variable A must be assigned before it can be used. And we haven't assigned A a value. So in this case, what I can do is add a late keyword here. And this is to signify to the compiler that, hey, I know that A cannot be null, but at this time when I'm defining it, I don't have a value for it. But later down in the execution of my program, I am going to have a value for A and I take the guarantee for that. So what you can do is ignore the error where A might be null and don't worry about that. So now if I do this and run my application, you're still going to see that it's giving me an error saying late variable A without initializer is definitely unassigned. So what I can do now is after I've defined my variable, set A equals to 10. And if we do that, and then I run the code once again, you're going to see that now 10 is going to be printed to the console. So this is why we use the late keyword. When we have a non-nullable variable, for which when we're defining the actual variable, we might not have a value for it, we can specify the late keyword before it. And that's going to tell the compiler that, hey, later down in the execution of my program, I am going to assign a value to this variable, and it's not going to be null, and I'll take the responsibility for that. And in the case we do this, and you're usually going to see it, and we do not assign a value to our variable, and we run our application, it might run, or the compiler might pick it up and give us an error, but it might run as well. And then if a runtime error occur, then it's your fault because you had told the compiler that, hey, I'm going to ensure that A is going to have a value before we reference the value from A. So that's pretty much all you need to know about the late keyword. So now that we have a good understanding of the late keyword, the next thing that we're going to be talking about are null of your operators, how we use them, and then I'm just going to be sharing a couple of them with you, but they're going to give you enough of an understanding to understand what the rest of them are within the actual Dart programming language and how to use them. So the first one that we're going to be talking about is called the null of your assignment operator, and we're going to be using it as follows. Let's say that I define a variable int optional x. So this basically means that this is a nullable variable. And then what I want to do is basically only give a value to x in the case that x is null. Well, in that case, what I can do is x, and then I can use the null aware assignment operator like so, and then I can set it to 20, and then I can do print x like so. And if we do that and run, you're going to see that 20 gets printed to the console. But now if I go ahead and before I use the null aware assignment operator, I set x to 10, then this here is not going to assign a value of 22x because x already has the value x is not null. So to the console, 10 is only going to be printed. So this is why we use the null aware operator and this operator only assigns a value to its variable in the case that the variable is null. So that's pretty much what it is. So the next thing that I'd like to talk about after this is the null aware access operator. So this operator is used to call a method or access a property only if the variable is not null. And I'll explain this with another example. Let's just say that I have a string optional and I call it name. And then what I'd like to do is I'd like to print name.length to the console. So what's the length of the string? Well, if I go ahead and do this, it's going to give me an error saying that, hey, the property length can't be unconditionally accessed because the receiver can be null. And that's correct. We have actually specified the name is a nullable variable. It might have a value, it might not. So here we can't be sure if name is going to have a length property associated with it because it can be null. So there are two ways we can approach this. The first is 
that we can use a null aware access operator, and that is by using a question mark before the period. And what this basically means is that, hey, if name is not null, then access the length property, otherwise don't. And that's not going to cause our program to crash. So now if I print or I run the actual application, nothing gets printed to the console besides null, and our application is now null safe. But if I go ahead and set name equals to John Jones, for example, and then I run it, now you're going to see that it is able to actually access the length on the actual name and then print the actual output for that onto the console. So this is how we use a nulliver access operator. Another way to approach the same problem instead of using a nulliver access operator is to cast away the nullability of the variable name by using an exclamation mark. And what this is basically stating is that at this point of time on line four, I know the name is absolutely going to have a value and it's not null. So you can be sure that the length property is actually available on the name variable and you can access it. And now if I click on run, you're going to see the nine will get printed to the console. But now if I go ahead and I remove the actual line where I'm setting the name equals to John Jones, you're going to see that we're not going to get an error anymore because we're explicitly telling the compiler that, hey, you can skip the null check on this. I am sure that the actual name variable is going to have a value. But now if I run my application and since name is going to be null, it's actually going to crash at runtime. There we go. So I usually recommend that you stick to using null aware operators. An example of that would be the null aware access operator that I've shown you here. When you're working with null values or nullable variables, and if there is a case where, for example, a function might require you to pass it a value explicitly, then there might be a use case for the exclamation mark there. But there is another nullivere operator that I'm going to be sharing with you guys to use in those cases as well. I think that the exclamation mark should be kept as a last resort, not as the first option that you deploy when you're writing your application. So with that said, let's move on to the next null aware operator, and that is going to be called the null cool escaping operator. And I just don't know the name for it, but I call the default operator or the default value operator. That's what I've given it a name by myself. And what this operator basically allows us to do is that it returns the right hand side value if the left hand side value is null. So what does that basically mean? Well, to give you an example of this, I'm going to add a print statement and I'm going to say that I'm going to print the name. But if I just do this and I run it, the code is going to run, but null is going to be printed to the console. But I don't want to print null. I want to print a default value to the console in the case that the name is null. Well, in that case, I can use this null aware operator, which is this double question mark. And what this basically states is that, hey, in the case that this left side value is null, then use this right hand side value. And here I can say Hussein Mustafa. So with that said, if I click run again, you are going to see that Hussein Mustafa is going to be printed to the console. But now before we print the actual statement, if I just set the actual name to John Jones, for example, now you're going to see that to the console, John Jones is going to be printed. And the reason for that is because name is no longer null. So it's just going to print name. If this left-hand side value was null, then it would have used the right-hand side value. So that's pretty much some of the most important null aware access operators within the Dart programming language. If you guys want a complete list of all of the null aware operators that are available within the Dart programming language, then I'll leave a link down in the description below to this article that's on darttutorial.org, where they've given a complete list of all of the null aware operators that are out there. And if you're enjoying this video thus far and would like to learn more about the Dart programming language, then I recommend that you take a look at another video that I've published already on my channel, where I share a bunch of cool Dart tips with you that are definitely going to elevate your Dart programming. But here you can see that we have a bunch of different operators, some of the ones that I've talked about, such as the if null operator, the null aware assignment operator, and the null aware access operator. But we also have the null assertion operator, which I called the exclamation mark. 
I have the Nullivere Cascade Operator, the Nullivere Index Operator, and the Nullivere Spread Operator. So some of these are more advanced use cases, and if you understand the basics of how to use the topmost operators, then when the time comes, you'll understand how to use the other ones as well. So now with this done, the last thing that I'd like to talk about before we talk about some of the best practices when it comes to working with null safety is how null safety kind of works when it comes to working with functions. And for that, I'm going to be doing the following. I have this main function, I'm going to be removing all of the content from it. And after this, I'm going to be defining a function that takes in a value and then returns us a square of it. And then within my main function, I'm going to say that I'm going to print the result from calling the square function and passing it five. So with this done, let's run it. And you're going to see that 25 gets printed to the console. But now, what if I want to call the square function, but the value that I'm going to give to the function is a nullable value. So in this case, the value might have a value or it might be null. So in this case, if I go ahead and I duplicate this print statement, and here, when I call the actual function, I pass null, I am going to get an error. And the reason for that is because the argument that I've specified here states that the value that gets passed in has to be a non-nullable value. So we can't pass in null. So how can I mitigate this issue? Well, what I'll do is I'll copy this function once more, and I'll say that this is going to be called save square. And I'm going to say that the value that gets passed in is going to be an int optional. And this way, we're going to remove the first error. So now we're presented with another issue, and that is that we can't multiply value with value. And the reason for that is because value might be null, and we can't multiply null with something because what would that be? So in this case, how can we fix the issue? Well, what I can do is do the following. I can say that if value is not null, then I'd like to return value times value like so. And otherwise, I'll just return null from the function. Because if we get a null value given to us, then what I'd like to do is return null from the function because we can't square a null. But if we do get a value which is not null, then I want to return the square for it by doing value times value. But now this is going to give me another error saying that, hey, this function is specified that it returns an integer, which is a non-nullable type. But here, we might have a value returned to us, or we might have null returned to us. So I'll have to update the actual function definition and say that now our function is going to have a return type, which is int optional. And now this is going to work. So with this, I can call the save square function here. And now you can see that I can pass null to the function. And if I run it, null will get printed to the console. And now if I copy this, paste it again, but this time to save square, I pass in two, then I should see 25, null, and four. And there we go. That's how it works. So hopefully by showcasing to use these examples, you now have a better understanding of how to use null safety and how it actually functions within the context of you writing Dart code. So the last thing that I'd like to talk about is the actual null assertion operator. And I had alluded to this before, but the null assertion operator basically allows us to assert that a value is not going to be null by ourselves. And this allows us to basically bypass the checks that the compiler makes, but at the cost that if the value turns out to be null during runtime, then our program is going to be crash. So I recommend that you use this sparingly because this is a dangerous move and we always want to write code that is as robust as possible, as error-free as possible, because that's just going to be ultimately what's best for us and what's best for the end user that's using our application. So with that, now what I'm going to be doing is sharing with you guys some best practices when it comes to working with null safety. The first best practice that I'd like to talk about is the following, and that is to initialize variables promptly. So whenever possible, initialize variables as soon as possible most probably or preferably when you actually define them. So for example, when I'm declaring a variable int a, then it's most preferred that I just give it a value at this point, and this is the best thing that you can do. The next thing that I'd like to talk about is even though nullable values are great and they are a resource within the Dart programming language, they should be used sparingly and you should always resort to using non-nullable variables wherever possible. So that's my next tip. You should use nullable types sparingly. Only use nullable types when it's absolutely necessary. Don't try to just default to using them all the time. The next thing I'd like to talk about after this is that instead of 
using the null assertion operator, you should try to use nullivir operators because nullivir operators are able to handle null values more gracefully than a null assertion operator. So I highly recommend that you try to leverage as many null of your operators as you can in the case that you're using nullable types and only resort to using a null assertion operator in the very worst case. So with that, that's pretty much it for today's video. I hope that you learned a thing or two about null safety and how to use it efficiently within your own programming journey. As always, if you enjoyed the video, then please don't forget to leave a like on the video and subscribe to my channel so that you get notified every time I release a new video. And as always, stay happy, stay healthy, keep learning, keep growing, and I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye-bye.